Welcome back to the 2020 Candidate One-on-One -on -one Interviews. Uh, for those that haven't seen any of these interviews yet, my name is Corey King. I'm the Executive Director of the Southern Mid Coast Maine Chamber, and we're doing a profile of all of our uh, candidates that are running in the races that the Chamber area covers. We have a six region, and so we, we've met, we're meeting with all the candidates from all of these races, interview them. Uh, this series is sponsored by Priority Real Estate. Thank you so much. We do appreciate their help. Um, as a little disclaimer up front, the Southern Mid Coast Maine Chamber does not endorse any candidates. Just as well, Priority Real Estate Group is a sponsor of the series um, uh, to, to support the chamber, but does not endorse candidates either. This is simply because we want to be able to get the information uh, to you on who you think um, your, your candidates are, and so you get a better sense of them before you get the voting booth. And with that, I would like to introduce our uh, next uh, candidate. It is District 50 of the State House uh, candidate, Mike Lawler. Mike, welcome. Thank you, Corey. Hey, Mike, right off the top, one of the things I like to do, and I know it's tricky with your district, but some people don't know what district they're in. So can you just kind of give us a, a very general um, outline of what District 50 is? What district, 50, district 50 is wholly contained within the town of Brunswick. Mm -hmm. And there are two other districts in the, in the town. Uh, basically, uh, it runs from Federal Street to the river. Uh, okay. That's, that's, that's the basic geography of it. Nope, that's great, that's great. So um, obviously if you're in Brunswick, you know, you, you, you know where those streets are, uh, or at least you know where Federal Street is. Um, yeah, Mike, we're just gonna do three, uh, three simple questions here. Uh, the first one being, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. What is your, what is your background? I've, I've seen your resume, but um, let's tell the world about it. Well, it's uh, born and raised in Nebraska, big town of Omaha. <laughs> and, uh, uh, went to school, learned a few things, joined the military, uh, 20 years in the Air Force, retired, um, picked up a few skills along the way, including, including computer skills. Mm -hmm. uh, wound up working uh, when I separated from the Air Force. I was stationed in, at the time in Texas, and I uh, wound up working for a local computer company, which no longer exists. The name of that company was DataPoint. Moved from data point to an English company down in Florida, known by its name, Raycal, Raycal Milgo, data communications company, still in business. And uh, then to a telephone manufacturing company, Intercom in Dallas. And finally, uh, my last real job was with Apple uh, in, in California. There you go. Yeah, Ca California, uh, France, and uh, Cork, Ireland. Oh, have you been to Cork, Ireland? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We, had, oh. we had a factory over there. We had a factory over there. Ireland yeah. and New Zealand are like the two places on my must-go list. And so, yeah. I was, uh, I was over there to, I led the automation of the factory over there. Oh, my goodness. That's, okay, that's impressive. That's impressive. So, you come to Maine. Uh, you're, you're, you're in Maine now. Uh, when, did you, when did you get here? We, we moved up from Connecticut. My wife and I moved from Connecticut in the year 2000. Okay. So, we've been up here nearly nearly 21 years now yeah and yeah, my, it's it's uh oh yeah yeah no I, uh, my wife and i moved down uh five year, years ago from, from up northern maine i was running the scout hegan chamber before this um and, and came down to this chamber we just, we just love it. um so question on on so so you get here uh and then you 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 decide to run to for political office well, why are you running what is uh well, what's I've motivating been, you yeah well i've been uh uh active in politics in a number of different ways over the years. Uh, I first ran for elective office in 2018, uh, also District 50 Main House, yeah. uh, against the same person, Ralph Tucker. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a rematch. I did not know it was a rematch. Yeah, this is a, this is a repeat, repeat offender type thing. <laughs> and the um, uh, reason for running is principally number one, I don't appreciate going to the polls and voting for someone that does not have an opponent. The issues yeah. just don't get aired, okay? But this is a special time, and I'm a little bit upset with the legislature for being absent without leave uh, during this pandemic. And we've got a governor who is leading a group of people who are invisible to us and are making important decisions 
and they put the state in a financial hole. And it's going to be a mess when the legislature next comes to town and has to do a budget. I maintain that there will be no tax increases, and this is going to be tough to do. Yeah. It'll be tough to do, but it can be done. And it, it'd be done by imposing a 30% reduction across the board in state government. That's everything. That's commissions, independent authorities, departments, you name it. And it did no exceptions. That will make us whole if we do that. But we can't raise taxes. People are, people are just, people are, are desperate. Well, that's it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's 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 the the biggest thing that's out there for this next legislative uh, um, uh, set of set of candidates, not legislators. Excuse me. Yeah, no, it's um, a historic. It's a historic uh, problem. It really it, is. It's a historic problem. That there's a giant budget shortfall, and and that's that's an interesting way to go about it. The, the reduction in state government. So, just so I'm clear, we're talking about positions in the state government, or are we talking about programs? Like, what is what is that 30% encompass? Just like so I, well, I don't, I don't believe that the legislature should be in the business of telling them what to cut. Just gotcha. Okay. Just you do a budget and and yeah. you, you everything is cut 30%. I, I think it's wrong for the legislature gotcha. to get in the business of saying, okay, Mr. Department of Labor, you need to get really a, get rid of Sally and George and move all of the things right. out on the lawn and you know that, that just um, that's what the governor and his uh, her uh, staff are for. They're, they're, that's what they're there for. Is plan. Yeah. Yeah. Plan. So you so you're saying let, let's let's get that number on the board and then let them figure out how exactly. they get to the number. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No, that, that that clears it up for sure. Um, but you're so right. I mean, the, the 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 budget and the shortfall and the taxes. I mean, these are the things that people are bringing up to me all the time, especially on these interviews. And the governor's, gone, the governor's gone crazy with the spending. I mean, we've gone right through the rainy day fund. It's gone. It is okay. gone. Yeah. Wow. Well, no, that's, that's great. Um, what are some other issues? I mean, obviously, there's nothing bigger than, than the budget and, 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 and getting this out. But I'm sure there's, there's other things you're passionate about, too. Two, two things, Corey. Yeah. One is transparency, and the yeah. second is accountability. Mm -hmm. And what I'm talking about is in the legislative process from the point where people come and talk and propose and then they discuss and they dispose and, and you know, all, all of this, how, how did this come about? Just, and, and it's not just the legislative process, it's what's going on right now without the legislature. Where is the transparency? Where is the accountability? It's missing, it's missing. You, you go to examine it as an outsider and you can't figure out how did this happen? And how do how do we keep it from happening again? Well, I, I, I can tell you for sure. I know when because we did some survey uh, when the when the governor's reopening plan came out, and we one of the big surveys we did was asking businesses, "How does this plan uh, affect you and affect your industry and that sort of thing?" And one of the things that we heard from the businesses was, "How did these checklists and stuff get created?" Who in these industries did they did they talk to to, to come up with with these? And, and in some cases, we, we got a few answers of hey, it went to this committee or group and this reopening, whatever. In other cases, we 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 didn't get those answers. And, exactly. And exactly. that makes it difficult for people to, to say, I'm behind this decision because I'm not sure what went into this decision. So, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And and finally, um, in, in terms of uh, uh, committee assignments, uh, if that if that's the right word, um, I want to be I want to be active. I mean, I've spent a number of years in business, in, yeah. in all different kinds of things, from development of standards. Okay, American National Standards Institute is an example. That kind of standard. Okay, um, I mean, I did that for several years when I was at Apple. Yeah. I led that. Uh, so I want to be involved in oversight of the people who are developing regulations mm -hmm. that affect the business community, mm -hmm. okay? I'll give you a concrete example. Please. I wanna see, I wanna see, um, I wanna see a process where a man and his wife move into Maine, maybe he's a military man, maybe he's not. One works, the other does not. Or maybe they both work, okay? But they move to Maine and one is a hairdresser she wants to work as a hairdresser in Maine, but she doesn't want to have to go back to school and go through all this process. Licensing, okay, there needs to be 
a process where we recognize that people move around and professionals, whether they be doctors, lawyers, or Indian chiefs, can just come here and they can work and contribute with a minimum of red tape. Transferable, basically, is what you're talking about. Transferable licensing and crediting and that. Reciprocity, you know, reciprocity yeah, 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 and licensing. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, let's, and you, and you alluded to this a little bit. I just want to make this just totally clear um, for, for everybody watching. Um, what in your past, what kind of experience have you had, which again, I've seen your resume, so I, I know the answer to the question, but they don't. Uh, but what in your past makes you suited for writing these policies and these standards and some of the things that you want to do? I mean, what experiences do you have with budgeting? What experiences do you have with this policy making? Um, like I said, you alluded to it a little bit. I just want to make it crystal clear for everyone. Well, well, it, it's uh, in the case of uh, in the state of case of the standards community, it's a voluntary process, okay, mm -hmm. but it's a collection of people from different companies. So think of it think of it as a as a body of people who are going to get together and agree how to make something or how to how to how to evaluate something and, and tell if it's safe. Right, right. It's a safety standard, okay, right. or. Uh, make a judgment as to how reliable a piece of communications equipment performs when it's actually put to work. What sort of tests do you need to run? And then everyone needs to agree so that you, you have what's called a standard. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And, and that process, that process involves some technical skills. It involves some ability to negotiate, arbitrate. Mm -hmm. And, and finally, uh, in some cases, you know, provide leadership for a, for a movement. Well, and that's, that's interesting that you're mirroring up all that because I've been in, I, mean, I haven't testified all that many times. It's less than 10 times or so. But when I'm in those committee hearings, this is often what comes up when they're talking about bill making is there are some unintended consequences that come when you don't look at all sides. You know, I mean, even the, a legislator might be trying to do the very best that they can and, and they write something in which just isn't usable for the people that the law is going to affect. And, exactly. and through your experience with Apple and with these other organizations, you've seen what that policy and that rulemaking is and, and, and how it affects folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which and, is, and, and the legislature needs to be sensitive to that and they've, they've not been, they have not been. Yeah, yeah. And I, well, can, that, see, I can see where the first, the first evidence of that would pop up in the in the day-to-day -day business of the chamber because you're, you're right there, you're right there hosting all of these uh, businesses. Well, that's it. That's it. And, 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 you know, the, the chamber, when, when issues come up and stances come up, you know, we'll, we'll often, we have a committee that we pull together, but we'll ask the membership how they feel about an issue. And we actually put the number at 70% rather than 50%. We figured if over 70% of our members feel a certain way, then, then, you know, it's our job to, to represent them there. And that's happened. I mean, that happened with the, the, the classic example is the, uh, the minimum wage increase and what that did to restaurant owners yep. um, and, and servers because they, they said it just it, it, it doesn't it doesn't work um, and so we went we went and, and fought with them and then we got that we got that overturned so that was great because yep. um, they got rid of them the, the tip credit until we got it reinstated anyway enough about me more about you is there anything else Mike uh, th that that you want to just an issue you want to get in front of people I mean you've you've covered a lot in a short amount of time but is there anything else that you want to mention? No, I don't think so. Uh, I, I think you've given people a pretty good idea of who you are. Yeah, sure. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Good, good, good. So last thing I'd like to close with is just asking uh, you if people want to find out more about you, if people want to uh, um, uh, get in touch with you about an issue or discuss something with you, what's the best way for them to reach you? Well, they can certainly, uh, they can visit my website. Beautiful. And that website is? It's uh, mikelawler.net yep. slash index.html. mikelawler.net slash, slash index.html. There you go. Slash index.html. Wonderful. So we. Uh, they, can con they can contact me on my amateur radio repeater. Oh yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, about that I operate on a seventy-foot antenna next to my barn. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm sure there's a few amateur. Well, I know there's a number of amateur radio operators in, in town, including in District 50. I know, yeah. I know where they all are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Uh, or they can call me. Just call me, call me uh, my cell phone. Yeah. Call me on my home phone. Yeah. Well, great. Um, well, Mike, that, that's. I think that's everything we need. I do want to let everyone know that the picture in the background is a is a hole that Mike uh, sponsored at a golf course in Holton, I believe you said, right? Holton Community Golf Course. I'm a member up there, and yeah. I co-sponsor it with the FAP Body Insurance Company. That's awesome. Nine that hole awesome. golf course, and uh, it's a delight to play. Yeah. Yeah, so there are certain little, there's nine whole courses all around the state that are just these little bit of gems. I, I, I just just love them. Um, well, hey, Mike, th thanks for joining us. I, I do want to thank everybody out there watching the video. And the one thing that I'll ask is, if you like uh, what you've heard today, please share it on Facebook. That's why we're doing these. Uh, you know, help Mike get his message out um, to, to anybody that's, uh, you know, in District 50 um, so, so that they know what he stands for and what he wants to represent. So I do want to thank uh, Priority Real Estate Group one more time. And Mike, I want to thank you for, for joining us and making the time. I really do. Oh, you're welcome, Corey. Anytime. All right. Thanks so much. And for those watching the videos, if you want to see more, you can go to the Chamber Facebook page or the Chamber YouTube channel and find the videos there. And we will see you next.